Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and today we're holding our monthly tech meet, and today we'll be talking about the six-cylinder slipper clutch. So anyways, we're going to look at um, a few different areas on the Silver Cloud One. We've addressed them before, but I wanted to go a little, little more depth on them. First of all, uh, this is the crankshaft damper. It's kind of like the balancer for the six-cylinder engine. And uh, I remember taking one apart for you guys to show you how they looked inside, but I didn't have a, a mandrel so I could test it. So what you got in here, stuff out of here. These parts are over here. This right here absorbs the vibrations for the, the crankshaft. Um, and I was really sold on that recently because I just had a car not long ago come in. It was a 37 Derby Bentley. And the guy just bought it. Pretty good running old car after we tuned it and we, we did some brake work and all that stuff. But when we drove it, he, he complained because he was taking it on the Mila California. He got in finally. 2,000 mile drive, I believe. And when you drive the car, as you were running through the gears, you hit around 2,500 RPM, and a whole car, you could just hear it in the drive lane. It kind of rattled. It almost sounded like transmission was bouncing around, stuff like that. So he, he's done a lot of research, and he says, I think it's that the damper. But the engine had been done, small, it had been gone through. He said, I said, well, I'll look into it. I'm not going to guarantee you that's going to fix it, but I'll, I'll go ahead and take that apart and address it for you. And uh, so I had to make tools to do it, to pull it off, obviously. And then I had to make a mandrel to hold the thing so I could test it and all that. And uh, we put new springs in it. It had brand new discs. It had the fiber discs in it. It had all been burnished or machined and all that. And I thought, well, somebody's done this. It can't be the problem. So we tested it, and it was really weak. Bought new springs, uh, retested it, got it right on. I think it was at 11 pounds pull. And that thing was so smooth after that. It just it blew me away. I learned a lot on that, that experience. Because uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about them, how that, that can cause problems. And I, I guess my little pea brain just didn't get around that topic very well. So anyways, we're going to get into this. This came off of that Mark VI over here. I've got a, It's the same thing, essentially, as a as a uh, cloud one. These springs and all that stuff in here, there's, there's two clutches. Uh, it has a pressure plate here. There are springs that go on here, that go into these, and it squeezes together. And this absorbs the vibration. Now there's a process for testing it. You have to, I knew I was. 17 and a half inches. 17 the and a half bar, inches. the testing <laughs> bar, where'd it go? Uh, here's my uh, Mickey Mouse bar that I'm going to put on there. And from the center of this to this hole here has to be 17 and a half inches. And the story I heard on why it's 17 and a half inches is that's just what they had and that's what they used and that's how they set their standards from that point on. That's, that's what I've heard. I don't know about you guys. You guys, yeah, right? Um, so I'm going to pull this thing apart real quick here. The thing is, is, when you test this, you've got, these are the drive springs and these are the clutch springs. I'm sorry, i got to back up on that. Um, the drive springs have to be out of here because then you're pulling against them. And, uh, so I should have done this before you guys got here. Let's see, where am I at? Let's get this one. And I put this one on an engine and uh, I, I, want, I took it back off because I want to make <laughs> that was close. <laughs> Quick like a buddy. Uh, good luck finding it over there. No, no. <laughs> oh my, that was good. Obviously the springs are going to get replaced now, right? Or we'll find it. So where is this situated on the car? It's after this the is on the front of the or the crankshaft. This is there's a pulley that bolts to it that drives the belts, the fan belts. 
So those of you out there watching this that are experts, I'm sure you're going to be a... Man, this guy's a butcher. The 50s Mercedes used a very similar damper on the 3 liter motors. It's not easy to get those springs out because they actually fit into recesses right. on each side. And there's actually a peg in the middle of the recess, so right. they don't want to come out. That's right. <laughs> As, as noted here. Now, are these uh, springs um, available now? Mm -hmm. Where do where, where you go? Uh, these I have got from, I have a set in, on the shelf. I got them from, uh, I think, Flying Spares. Okay. Okay, and then the pre war stuff I got from Fines in the UK. They were proud of them, obviously, but uh, I got them. And on that pre-war, that small horsepower, you had three choices on the clutch compression springs on the tension. Yeah. yeah. And according to the book, and, and I talked to the vintage garage, Pierce over there, uh, and uh, he said, because when we took it apart, it was missing six. Oh, good eye. Awesome. Uh, but he said you can remove up to six out of the... Like or something, yeah. Is it raining? Yeah, baby. So, um, I think there were 16 on that, but I, I don't remember exactly. I just know I spent a lot of money for the parts and it worked. So, is there actually coaxial springs in there? The smaller one inside? That's yes, it's two sets of springs. My Mickey Mouse mandrel, my machining skills are dubious at Mine best. Like that. Does it? <laughs> yeah. Except for, I bet you got Woodruff keys that were the right size. I, for some reason, I measured them wrong. I used a 10 penny nail. 10 penny nail? Yes. <laughs> and no less. I guess I'm showing my age by saying a 10 penny nail. <laughs> and Woodruff keys. Huh? Oh, did I lose it? And there's another one. Right yeah, there. I think one will hold it. Once I tighten that, it's pretty. Pretty. Huh? Oh, these. The hardest thing for me to figure out was to how to machine that taper on the end. Yeah. And I probably did it wrong, but it worked. So, here we go. This is the fun part. Stop. 